At Building 43, we study world-changing technology and technology teams. And here we're at Google's headquarters in Mountain View, California, to study one of the biggest teams, the Gmail team and its new priority inbox feature. <laughs> Who are you? So my name is Rajan Sheth and I'm the group product manager for Google Apps. And so I, I work on our apps for business and education, uh, including things like Gmail, um, Calendar, Google Docs for, for businesses and education. Three of my favorite things in life. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And that me I too. Use rely on every day. And that's <laughs> Not that I'm biased, but me too. So Priority Inbox, the idea behind Priority Inbox is that all of us get a ton of email uh, every single day. In fact, the average information worker gets about 150 to 200 messages every single day. And so, wouldn't it be great if when you show up and, and look at your inbox, rather than seeing all those 150 messages, you see the 10 or 15 that are most important to you, that you need to read, that you need to reply to right now. And that's essentially what Priority Inbox does. It splits your inbox into multiple areas so that you can see the most important messages first. Yeah. Now that I've had a couple weeks with it, and, uh, and I love it, by the way, I know some things sneak through, and, and it, it marks some things as important that I, I go, how did it pick that? It's not very mm -hmm. important to me. Yep. Um, how, give me a sense of the, how the algorithms are actually working to pick that email out of the, the bigger inbox and say that one is important. That's a good question. So we, we take signals from you to start off with, and we take a look at um, how you use email to, uh, to begin with. So for example, are there people that when they send you an email you reply to them right away? Um, are there people that are particularly important to you? Um, are there messages that you've starred? Are there things that you've read very quickly? And try to figure out based on that what might be important to you and what might not be. It's, it's a very tough science. It's not an exact thing. It's a very tough problem because, yeah. for example, an email that goes to you you may consider completely not important, but I may think it's the most important thing in the world. So what we try to do is do our best to try to figure that out to okay. start off with. But then the, the next part of that is that you can help us and you can train it. And so if we do something where we put something that's important into the not important category, you can tell us it's important, very much like a spam filter yeah. uh, in reverse. And so that way, we start to learn even more about what might be important and what's not. Last night I asked what kinds of questions on, I asked my Twitter audience what kind of questions I should ask you. Mm -hmm. And it was really fascinating to watch the responses because about half the responses were, I love this feature, it saved my life, it makes me more productive. And half the responses were, I hate this feature and I turn it off and I didn't like it. <laughs> are you hearing the same thing from the marketplace? I, I think there are two things that are happening here. The first thing is that email for, for many people, they have, they have a very defined flow for how they, how they go through their email. And anything that, that changes that flow is, uh, is very tough to, to, to adapt to, um, versus others that, that will, uh, will adapt to new flows uh, uh, very, very easily. But that said, I think there's something else that's going on here, which is I think in certain cases we can predict really well for, for people what might be important and what's not. And for other people, there, there may be more, more things that they need to do to train it. And it may take a little bit more time to train uh, the system to recognize uh, uh, what's important and what's not. And, and you know, I think what we have seen is that it's actually been equally valuable amongst small business users, uh, consumer users, um, large business users. Uh, and it really depends on, on who the user is. It, it also shows that uh Gmail has a wide variety of users from beginners who just don't do anything custom yep. to people who are sort of advanced like me. I, I have hundreds of Gmail rules that you know filter things out and throw things away yeah. to really advanced users where they have you know intricate uh, tagging systems and they'll and filtering systems and those people seem to really not like this because. Uh, it doesn't work with some of the tags or some of the systems that they've already built. Right, right. And what we've done there, though, is that we actually make it such that you can choose about whether or not you want it to work with your filters or if you don't. And there, there are benefits and, and trade-offs uh, to, to both ends. So, for example, I'm, I'm one of those guys. I set up 
tons of filters to say, mark this one as important, uh, not, you know, mark, mark something as unimportant, various things like that. So what uh, we've tried to do is, is we give you the option to say, you know, have this be on top of your filters. So we look at your filters first and then we figure out what's important and what's not, or should we ignore it? And that's useful, for example, let's say there's a mailing list that you have where you get tons of email, but every now and then there's that one email there that might actually be really important. This can actually pick something out of that and, and promote it to your inbox. Yeah. How, I know from the talking to engineers at Google that you guys have a very in, open internal culture and people can see source code of other, other people's projects and stuff yeah. like that. How portable is this functionality and are we gonna see this functionality in other, other products? I know, I know Vic and Dutra's team's working on something social, right? Uh, Eric Schmidt talked about it. Could they take your, your, this code and put it into a new system? Well, I, I think it, actually where a lot of this came from, the concept of this really came from search. I mean, the, the concept of Google search is exactly like this, that we show you the most relevant things first. And, and we try to do that in, in a lot of uh, sit, uh, situations to show you the most relevant things first. This is probably the toughest example of that because you know, in the web world, we can pretty universally start to guess what's gonna be most important and what's not uh, uh, because everybody has access to, to everything. But then in this world, uh, everything, it's, it's a personal preference. And so um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily sure if, if all of this is necessarily portable, but the concept, you're right, is actually very valuable, not just in this kind of context, but, but just about in any information context that you have. No, I, I mean, I read a lot of tweets, and I'd love to have a filtering system for, for those real-time streaming right. systems yeah. that are throwing a lot of noise at us with a little bit of good stuff. And yeah. we yeah. want to be able to filter out the good stuff, and it'll be interesting to see what else you, you guys do yeah. with this. So people have really loved this feature. Um, and with, within all of the various business segments that, uh, uh, that we've seen. And I actually think it's, in particular, this is great for business users because in, in a business, typically you, you end up receiving a tremendous amount of email. And, you, and part of your job is every day you have to get through that email. You have to get, uh, get through it and answer the most important things that are there. So this really, really helps. Uh, I, I can tell you from my own personal experience, um, I've been on experimental versions of this for the past several months. Um, and it's gotten to the point where it's so good that I almost never look at things in my everything else section. Mm. And uh, you know, I, I scan it. I make sure you know maybe there's something that, that got misplaced there. But I'm trusting it uh, the, to to a great degree, and it cuts out almost 70% of my inbox. And so for me, there's an appreciable savings in time. I mean, what that means for me is it shaves 30 to 60 minutes off of my workday, yeah. which is just a tremendous savings for me, and I can I can be a lot more productive as a result of that. Tell me a little bit about the. The culture. I mean, I, we're we're sitting in one of the labs here with lots of people walking around. How was this feature developed? Uh, it was developed, I believe, in multiple locations yeah. around the world. Yeah. Tell me what it's like to work at Google and, and on a feature like this. The 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 greatest thing I love about Google is that there's a there's a lot of room for creativity and and there's kind of this culture of trying to. To, to challenge the norm. What was the first meetings like where, where this came up? You know, how, how, does a, how does a big company come up with a new feature and say, hey, we should do this? You know? Well, the, the toughest part about that is, you know, I think everybody universally agreed this would be great if we could do it. Um, part of the issue was the thinking, oh, you know what, this might be pie in the sky. Can we actually do this and do this really, really reliably? And so trying to figure out what are the right signals uh, uh, to look at versus what aren't. Should we make it adjustable for users? Should users, for example, have sliders that they can go, you know, say this, this kind of stuff is important, that stuff is not important versus should we try to make it automatic? A, a lot of that was, uh, was uh, we had to battle through. Yeah. Um, in, and I think one of the best things we do here is that we dog food everything that, uh, that we... Explain what that means. That's people, a good question. I know what that means because I worked in the tech industry. But. Yeah, so dog food means that we eat our own dog food. That, and what that means is that literally my email is on an experimental build of Gmail. And we are trying out our own stuff for our corporation, um, starting with a small set of people. If it works for that small set of people, we expand it to, uh, expand it to more Google employees. So getting that feedback early on 
is, is uh, tremendously valuable. Yep. We're a very iterative culture. We don't plan things that are you know, three years out. We put something out there, try it out, try to build the simplest possible thing and then iterate on it and build, build more on top of it. And this, this is a great example of that. Yep. Um, so you could see it just get better and better and better and better on your own email inbox as people gave more feedback as people started to use it. I bet you guys are watching the stats of what this does to uh, people's reading time. Mm -hmm. Are you learning anything? Like yeah, we talked to a lot of our testers uh, about this and tried to figure out, you know, is this actually making an appreciable difference for them? And we found that it was actually, they were saving in, on average about 6% of their time overall um, with, uh, with, this, uh, with this functionality. And so, so are they using Gmail 6% less time or are they reading 6% better messages or something like that. Well, I think, I think really it's, it's they're able to get through their inbox faster. And uh, you know, I, I think we're, we're not necessarily, with Gmail, we don't necessarily want it such that people have to spend more time within Gmail. Uh, we want to make it such that they can do the tasks that they need to do um, as, quickly as, they, as quickly as they can, if they're the most, uh, most efficient. Um, what we found then for, for business users is that, you know, that 6%, the average business user is spending about a third of their week reading and, and answering email. Wow. Which is crazy, right? And yeah. um, this, this 6%, that's, that shaves almost a week off of every year and makes people a lot more productive. There's, you know, very, very tangible savings. Very cool. And one of the questions was, when is this going to show up on my yeah. iPhone or my uh, mobile client? You know, because the email clients that are built in the mobile phones don't show the priority inbox. Are, are you going to be able to ship the priority inbox in a way that will work with all inboxes? Yeah, eventually we will. Now, it, it is a challenge. I mean, I think that uh, there are certain parts of this that, that are less of a challenge that, that we're attacking first. So, for example, the mobile web client, um, you know, we, we definitely want to figure out the right way to put something like that, that in here. When you look at any random, let's say, IMAP client or, or anything else out there, it's a little bit tougher to try to figure out what's the right way to put it in there and what's the, what's the right way not to. Um, because you can't have the multiple pane windows unless you, you make a change on the client. And so I think that's going to take a little bit more thought uh, to try to figure that out. But, uh, but, but, that is the, but we definitely would love it such that no matter where you check your email, you're seeing the most important messages. Yeah. One last question. Is there a way for me as an emailer to uh, try to make my emails more uh, important to your <laughs> inbox so that I show up more? in the uh, priority inbox. I mean, the PR people will want to know that question about me, right? How, yep. how does their message get higher up in my inbox than uh, other PR companies, right? Well, the great thing about this is it's really personal choice. Um, you know, for example, if you get a newsletter from somebody um, on a weekly basis and you really like it to the point where you read it every single week, you're, you're, uh, you, know, you start for follow-up and uh, uh, you know, let's, say, let's say you're part of a group and you, you forward it to people, you reply to it, you do things like that, then chances are it's going to be marked as, uh, as important. But it's really personal because, for example, I may get that same newsletter and I may never read it. And for me then it, it's, it's not important. And so it really, really what, it, what it drives towards is people essentially need to create compelling content for their, their end users. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Where do we learn more about, the, uh, about Priority Inbox and where do we follow you on the internet? Are you on Google Buzz, for instance? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you can learn more about, uh, about this just by logging into Gmail. And, and uh, if you haven't used it, there's a, there's a big red uh, link at the top that says uh, Priority Inbox and you can start to, start to use that. And, uh, and with me, I'm, I'm on uh, you know, all, the, all the major networks on Buzz, on, on Twitter, Where do we find Facebook. you? What's your address? On Twitter, I'm, uh, I'm just Roger. Okay. So. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time. With Great. Well, thank you. Yeah.